everybody, it is Mike Les and it is Saturday morning, November 3rd, and I am headed to Dyersville, Iowa to the National Farm Toy Show. I've never been to this show and uh, always wanted to go, so the weather was crappy at home. There's going to be no farming activity at home so far, so uh, my wife and I are headed right there, but she does not like to be on the camera, so even though she's sitting beside me, I'm not going to put her on here, but you might see her later in this video. So we're going to go to the toy show today, and then tonight... Uh, Toy Tractor Times, or Big Tractor Power, is having a dinner at the Country Junction restaurant, and he has asked me to do a little speech there, so that will be at 6.30 tonight, but as you're watching this video, it'll probably be over with. Okay, we have arrived in Dyersville, Iowa, walking into the show, and my wife looks thrilled to be here. So we started out at the Beckman Catholic School and there was a lot of vendors in here and so forth. Uh, also the model farm displays were in here and that's my favorite part about a toy show is the model farm displays. But uh, anyways, I walked in, started out at SpecCast and they were showing off the new model farm replicas for the coming year. And I'm pretty excited about those 164th white tractors are coming with, the 2105. I think there's going to be four different versions of that and that Brigo air seater will definitely be in my collection. From there, I went over to uh, two uh, scale fabricators, and uh, you can check them out at uh, twoscalefab.com, and they make a lot of uh, farm replicas. I did not know these guys prior to the show, but they knew who I was and uh, talked with them quite a bit. Pretty good guys, and they sat with me later at the dinner, sat right across from me, so I had a real good conversation with them. And now we are over to the farm displays, and there is just a lot of good stuff here, as you will see. As I walk around, um, there's different divisions here for youth, adults, and so forth. Uh, one thing I did learn is if you win at this show, you are not allowed to participate in it until three years later. So uh, one guy I know that does really good at this, he won last year, I believe, so he has to take uh, this year and next year off, then he can come back. But uh, anyways, just a lot of detail and everything here, and uh, just great work by all these guys and we'll spend the next couple minutes walking around checking these out just a lot of hours getting all this done and then of course hauling it to the show setting it back up and making sure nothing breaks and so forth but uh, as you can see different scales and so forth there's uh, 164th 116th there's even a 187th there or HO scale so again great work to all these guys here's a look at a tractor pull maybe at a county fair and so forth. Um, all I can say is I'm glad I'm not a judge here because I would have a hard time deciding which one was actually my favorite. But as you will see coming up, I think you will guess which one is my favorite it's just because it had a lot of versatiles in it. And also these custom builds are just awesome here. Uh, did not carry a lot of money in here with me, which is a good thing. Actually, I did not buy any toys here, but uh, that new idea uni system you see right there will be in my collection in the future as well. I did not buy one at the show, and actually I'm not even sure if he was selling one at the show here, but uh, got his information and I will order myself one of those. So here's another uh, great farm display. This one was bigger, but there's a lot of action going on here. And feel free, uh, stop the video if you want to just zoom in and take a better look but you can see deer running across the road right there i mean the bridge the water just everything phenomenal And this display here was uh, four different brackets of a custom silage operation, custom corn silage, I assume uh, with the pivots and the equipment somewhere in the Texas, Oklahoma panhandle or southern southwest Kansas. Anyways, uh, pretty neat display and again, a lot of work. And can appreciate this one here with the White American Series tractors. There was one there in the field pulling a wagon. And then uh, there's two more here at the silo. One on a wagon and uh, one at the blower. And, of course, uh, here we go walking around. One uh, 
of a farm or a tractor show, farm equipment dealer. So. And I really like this display here. Had a white four-wheel drive out there pulling a disc, a couple massy combines, a versatile bi-directional right there with the swather head on it. And I assume this one was uh, replicating a farm somewhere from that somewhere up in that northwest uh minnesota or north dakota manitoba region and uh just really like this one i guess they hand built those bi-directionals and there's one with a mower on the front and a swing frame mower on the back and then there was another bi-directional over on the grain auger of course another white in the shop there so like i said i really like this one this was uh, pretty darn neat And here's another one that was pretty neat, uh, one thirty-second scale, I believe, with uh, kind of the round barn there, and of course a case uh, four-wheel drive or crab steer four-wheel drive there. And this one also very neat, uh, John Deere lawnmower dealership from back in the day. I don't know what era this was, but uh, did a real nice job here. And uh, we'll just walk around and check this one out. And this was, I guess. Uh, 1 16th scale and I think uh, see a first place trophy coming up there for this one so I'm not sure how many different trophies they give out like I said there's different divisions in different scales and so forth but uh, again real nice job here and we're going to come over to this one and this is another one I believe took first place and got an interview coming up with these guys here in a little bit but I really like this one with these uh versatiles out here in the field the penna wagons had a crone chopper and a big x and filling some silage bags here anyways uh did get to talk to these guys they again i did not know them prior to this show but they knew who i was watching my videos and so forth so uh, they're going to tell us a little bit uh or not a little bit all about their display here coming up in just a few I apologize when I interview these guys. I do not do a lot of interviewing of people, so I did not have the camera right on them the whole time, but you can hear what they had to say anyhow. Okay, so I uh, made it here to the farm toy show, and uh, we're inside the gym at the school, and I'm going around looking at the farm displays, and these two guys here that will introduce themselves and build a nice custom display using a lot of versatiles, so they're going to tell us all about it. Uh, I'm Dan Meyer from... Uh, uh, Tioga, North Dakota, and I'm Andrew Rinchel from Mountain Lake, Minnesota. Uh, this is a central Minnesota uh, theme display that we uh, tried to model. Um, starting out front, we tried to show almost the whole process of haylage, alfalfa haylage. Um, starting out front right there, we have the big M in an alfalfa field opening it up. Um, the time frame on this display is kind of roughly early June to mid June, uh, showing a second cutting of alfalfa. So the little you know, higher grade alfalfa, that's why they're chopping it versus bailing it or doing tailage. Yep. Um, right out there you have that big M opening that up. Um, here we have the big X uh, 650 uh, about to turn into another windrow. Uh, uh, they would have been chopping this, or they would have cut this, excuse me, last night, probably late afternoon, early evening. Mm -hmm. This would be earlier in the morning. Um, and then here you have the merger, which would be done with this field. It's probably going to go in park for the day. And then uh, he'll maybe jump in another wagon if they need it or whatever. And then uh, eventually later in the afternoon, they probably go back and actually pick up that field. Yep. And stuff like that. And over here, this is where they're bringing it to, is to a bagger. Um, and then they'd be bagging it. So you can see the other Penta wagon and Versatile yep. leaving to come back out and catch the chopper. So uh, I'm going to turn it over to Andrew here because uh, he scratch built all the pieces out of brass. So okay. That's probably the most impressive thing about all this. Yeah, so. you can tell us a little about right. that process because I don't know much about it. Yeah. So. Like Dan said, everything is scratch built out of brass. Uh, I try to make everything as functional as possible. Wings fold up and down. Mm -hmm. Wow. What do you use for like the alfalfa then? That's actually, uh, so the whole process of this, me and him teaming up, we're actually 10 hours apart. Um, I did the scenery work and the display building. Okay. He did all the pieces. Uh, the alfalfa is actually made out of what's called static grass, and it's a process of growing it and using uh, what they call ground 
foam to give it the texture of the leaves and everything else. Okay. Like that. So that's how we get that effect. Yeah. So. Nice uh, even growth and weed free. Yeah, fruit. it might be a little over blooming for a, a dairy or something like that. Yeah. But hey, no. I didn't get the looks, custom fruit didn't get there. Looks great. Yeah. So. Yeah, it looks great. So. so for these versatiles, what we did is we removed the Ertl, well, they started as Ertl tractors, but we, when I removed the smoke uh, exhaust, 100% mm -hmm. uh, scratch built, some photo etch mesh in there, soldered up. Uh, we got the hitch pin chains, hydraulic lines for the Penta wagons. Mm -hmm. They also raise the mower. Uh, rear gate is also functional. One of the cool things about the versatiles too that he did, and not many people probably notice it, but he scratch built the rims out of brass too. Those aren't okay, even the yeah. rims that come on the actual Yeah, they look uh, look a little better than the toys that right, I yeah. have on my toy shelf. I think shelf. they even got the nut detail on them and everything. Okay, so, yeah. yeah. I'll probably have to put my reading glasses on to see that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> And uh, our storyline on this uh, custom crew is kind of interesting. We, to break it up a little bit, we wanted to go with the older paint scheme on the versatiles. This tractor is probably getting phased out, and like uh, Andrew will say, we, it was probably the big dog on the on the crew for a while, and yeah. now it's kind of going back into the merger and lighter mm -hmm. duty. They'll probably in the fall, and corn would go on and go on the cust or into a wagon and okay, for the corn yeah. chopping yeah. Mm -hmm. and stuff like that. But a really cool detail that he added was the. The front hub still on it and stuff like that. Yes. Like it did have tools at one yep. point, and they're moving on to floating or yeah. floaters. Uh, yeah. Thing, so. Yeah. Would you care to comment like how much time you spill spend building something like this merger? Or? I don't keep track of individual pieces, but for all the pieces on the display, I estimate around a thousand hours. Oh wow. Okay. So. And Dan said for his yeah, for the displays, you know, it's not near as much as that, but I, I probably have around 200 hours into the just the, the scenery and yeah. the display building. So. so when did you guys start on this? Or uh, We actually got together uh, last March in Sioux Falls, South Dakota at a toy show, and we sat down at a table and started drawing out our plans okay. for what we kind of wanted yep. to do. He had the, you had the big X and the big M pretty much done. Okay. Um, we knew those were going to be kind of the centerpieces, and then from there we were trying to decide what tractors we were going to use and whatnot. So, okay, yeah. So. That could take uh, a few hours just planning on what to build next to. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we had lots of discussions. <laughs> yeah, yeah, back and forth. And yeah. And stuff, so. Yeah. It was a lot of logistics involved being 10 hours apart, but it all came together really yep. nice. And, yeah, well, it looks, looks great, and yeah. thanks for taking a little time and telling me all about it. Oh, you so. bet. No problem. And here was one, uh, another nice fall harvest display right beside the one I was just at, and this one was really neat and something different. They went ahead and made a model of the tractor pull at the National Farm Machinery Show in Louisville, Kentucky, and me having been at this tractor pull many, many years uh, over the years, I really like this. This was about as real as it gets, and everything was just laid out, just like you'd see it if you do go to this tractor pull. So they had the uh, of course, all the pullers out here with their semi-trucks. And the Broadbent Arena right here where uh, a lot of the guys park their tractors, weigh them in and so forth. So again, a really nice job these guys did. And just a couple shots of some of the vendors and so forth. All kinds of farm toys here, farm memorabilia, brochures, and so forth found at this show. Uh, I did not videotape everything, but there's definitely some neat stuff here. Uh, whether it was produced by Ertl, some of the other toy companies or custom built it's here and it was just uh, all pretty good After I uh, got done looking at the school there, we walked over to the National Farm Toy Museum. And I've been to this museum before. This was founded in 1986, I am told. Same year I graduated high school. So, anyways, we went in here. Uh, my wife's never been here before, so this is a first for her. But uh, since the show was going on, they also did have a lot of vendors over on the east side of the building. So, we went over there, looked at a lot of toys and toy tractors and so forth. And... Check that all out. I didn't buy nothing over here either. And then we went up in the museum. 
But uh, as you can see in the next uh, coming video clips, just uh, more neat stuff. And trust me, it's hard for me to come to these shows and not buy anything. My collection is mostly 164th scale. And I'm about out of room for that stuff too. But I uh, still buy the new 164 stuff as it comes out. Uh, 116 stuff, maybe it's good I don't have the room. Because a lot of this stuff I would definitely want. Of course, at some of these vendors here, I see some toys that I did have as a kid. Not sure what happened to. I still do have a lot of the stuff I have had as a kid but uh, some of it got run over because we had it in the wrong spot or whatever and destroyed and of course a lot of this stuff you I kind of remember it but uh, always good to see it again and uh, just about got everything wrapped up here so we are gonna head over to the museum right now and go check it out so there's two uh, two floors here so downstairs and then of course uh, go upstairs where there's uh, Pretty much all toys up there down here is uh, a little bit of everything and uh, a lot of the history and so forth of Iowa and uh, farm toys and whatnot and a couple nice displays just showing the era of farming as you'll see coming up. And I just want to say while I was visiting the show here, you know, I make these videos. I'm pretty much by myself all the time when I record them uh, out in the field, so forth, edit these things in my spare time. Whatnot, but I do not get to interact with a lot of people and when I come to these shows and I guess I I guess I can say I have a pretty good following on here with uh, 20,000 subscribers now, which I just hit that the other day. So thank you everybody for that uh, But anyways uh, when I come to these shows and see people and, and they're like hey, we know who you are We follow you or we watch you on uh, YouTube makes me uh, feel good and keeps me keeps me going a lot of Ford and Ford New Holland memorabilia right here. And, of course, these toy Ford tractors, they were always a little bigger scale. Uh, I did have the one with the cab when I was a kid. Now, that's one tractor I do not have anymore. I'm not sure what actually happened to that. And then I know my cousins, John and Brian, had the one there without the cab. But, uh... And I'm sure a lot of you watching this video have been to the show or been to the museum, but if you have not been here, Dyersville, Iowa, I'm going to say is more uh, east central Iowa, just uh, west of Dubuque. So it's definitely worth uh, worth the trip. You can spend, uh, oh, I don't know, probably I'd say no more than two hours here tops to see everything, but it's definitely worth uh, visiting. And, of course, the Field of Dreams, which I'll be coming up later in the video. A couple pictures of that. Uh, that's also in Dyersville, Iowa, from a 1989 movie that I actually have never watched yet. But I'm going to have to now because I will have a drone video coming up of the baseball field there. We will now head upstairs and check out the rest of the stuff. So you can either take the steps or there is an elevator if you need one of those to get up here. But uh, all kinds of different scales and some custom built and Ertl built, Britain, uh, spec cast and so forth all up here. But about every make and model of uh, farm toy you could find at this museum on display. Now, if only I could have had this equipment when I was a kid right here. I had a sandbox with barns built in at silos and so forth. And we our yard was about an acre. And I used to farm about every bit of that with toy tractors. If I would have had these 36 and 48 row corn planters back then, that would have been very helpful. I guess I had imaginary ones to get the job done. But uh, all I can say is, wow. But that toy would take up a lot of room.
And that's pretty well going to wrap up the tour of the museum. I didn't get everything on camera, but I got a lot of it for you to see here. If you've never been here, so again, check it out. I am now going to head over, or we are now going to head over to the Ertl Toy Factory or Tomy uh, Outlet Store. And this was pretty neat. I've never been here before. This is just on the other side of the highway. And went inside here. They had the Ertl Showroom where they showed off or was displaying all the new farm toys or what's coming. So we'll just walk around these tables here and take a look at everything and check it out. But I see a couple uh, 164 stuff that will definitely be in my collection in the near future as it becomes available. And then of course they had an outlet store here too where you could buy stuff, but that was pretty crowded and with me collecting the 164s, that was the row in the store I wanted to go down, but I could not get down there. There was too many people. So I get back to Iowa, so I'll have to wheel in here sometime when I'm in the area. But as you can see, there is a lot of new stuff out or new stuff coming and again, just awesome. I definitely want that. And this Hagee uh, sprayer with the applicator on it was pretty neat, I thought. And, well, everything was just pretty neat. Let's just put it that way. And that's pretty well going to wrap up the tour here of the Ertl showroom. So a good mix of all brands of equipment coming or just, just released. So uh, then headed over to the park in Dyersville, Iowa, where there were several vendors on display there in tents and in the buildings and so forth. I did go inside the one building. This was getting towards the end of the day when things were wrapping up. So there was not a lot of crowd and stuff to fight. But uh, this ta table right here definitely sparked my interest with all the hand-built or custom-built 164 scale farm equipment. I did go back then to the school, and I could not get enough of this uh, 164th uh, custom-built uni system here, so just thought that I'd put that in the video one more time. After this, then, I went over to the Country Junction restaurant where Toy Tractor Times was putting on an evening uh, dinner banquet, and I was the speaker at. And, uh, went over there, uh, a lot of people were there. I'm gonna say they had a crowd of over 50. You could bring in your custom built uh, farm toys and so forth. And just had a good time. We had dinner, we had ham steak, mashed potatoes and corn, some pretty good dinner rolls. They did have an open bar. And then here were some of the custom built toys that people brought. And after dinner, then I gave about a 40 minute speech just talking about the life in the farm equipment business, farming, uh, stuff I see in my travels and so forth. And that went really well. According to the compliments after the show, uh, everyone said I did a very good job and was glad to have me. So thanks for everybody in attendance there and listening to me for 40 minutes. Here's just a couple random pictures I took at the end of the video here, putting the end of the video. Just wanted to say uh, this show was phenomenal. It was, again, it was my first time here. Uh, had a great time and will definitely come back in the future. We did head out to the Field of Dreams here, which uh, I'm sure a lot of you saw that movie. Um, they were harvesting the cornfield right behind it. So I did ask for permission to fly my drone here. So I will have a video coming up in the very near future of the Field of Dreams and them harvesting in the background. 
And I just, uh, we had a couple hours there, so we drove around the Dyersville area. It was starting to rain a little bit. Some guys were wrapping up harvest, some guys round baling corn stalks and so forth. And was looking for a good video opportunity, did not really find one. But uh, again, this is a beautiful area to visit. And like I said, if you've never been here and you're going to be halfway close, it's definitely worthwhile. So once again, that's about going to do it for this video. And as always, thanks for watching. I still have a lot of exciting harvest videos coming from this fall. Uh, a lot of corn silage videos. I still even have some haylage and corn planting videos from last spring that I will try to get done and on my YouTube channel this winter. Thanks again, everyone.